Welcome back to Nigeria 2015. It's time for the headlines now with Ayotunde Balogun. Many thanks, Chamberlain. Well, the Chibok girls, corruption and violence-free polls were among the key issues addressed today as President Goodluck Jonathan answered questions from journalists in a media chat in Abuja, the nation's federal capital. Now, the president asked Nigerians to be patient with the government on the release of the Chibok girls while reassuring them that the 2015 general elections will not draw the nation into war. He also said he will be willing to relinquish power if he loses the election. Now, the Nigerian government today warned head submissions in the country not to allow themselves to be used to compromise the electoral process. Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Aminu Wali, told envoys from the various embassies and high commissions that information reaching the government of Nigeria suggests that some of the heads of missions may interfere in the electoral process, saying this is unacceptable. Now, the Nigeria military has reiterated its commitment to its duty in working to ensure the sustenance of peace, law, order and stability in the country before, during and even after the forthcoming general elections. A statement signed by the Director of Defense Information, Major General Chris Ulukolade, it says the military is concerned about the tension being generated in certain quarters with regards to the roles of the Nigerian military in the ongoing political activities and recent developments, especially in relation to the electioneering programs in the country. Part of that statement reads, quote, it has become necessary to reassure Nigerians that the military will remain professional, apolitical, and nonpartisan in all operations or activities related to this crucial exercise, while also working with all security agencies and stakeholders in the process. End of quote. Now, political parties in Kano Estate, uh, northwest Nigeria, have assigned uh, an election peace accord with, uh, Nigeria, with the Nigeria police. Now, the police commissioner in Kano, Mr. Adenrile Shinoba, uh, says the peace pact represents an agreement between parties to conduct uh, themselves and their members during the elections and, of course, campaigns. Well, he says no excuses whatsoever will be entertained from anyone who breaches uh, these agreements. Uh, those are the news headlines. It's still Nigeria 2015. Chamberlain, back to you. Well, thank you, Ayo. Well, uh, moving on now. Well, it wasn't long. As a matter of I think it was yesterday, but uh, the materials, the commentary, the headlines, still talking about it today. The director general of uh, President Jonathan's campaign organization spoke up earlier on about the rescheduling of the elections, the distribution of the permanent voter cards, he spoke strongly, expressing himself about what he thinks of that. Now, let's bring you what he said uh, in this conference when he spoke to journalists about it. Take a look. I believe that May 29th is sacrosanct, and we are keeping our eyes on that date when President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan will be sworn in as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria by the grace of God. INEC, from all indications, INEC is not fully prepared for the elections. These are issues, there are issues with the PVCs, the permanent voters cards. Almost 30 million people are yet to get their PVCs, despite the fact that the date of distribution was extended. Ballot boxes are reportedly inadequate. Adequate training of staff for the election had not been concluded and other problems facing INEC. Quite clearly, the shift in election date is meant to save INEC from monumental embarrassment. I would like to reiterate that the PDP is ready for the election any day. We are querying the INEC for some aberration in the distribution of PVCs. How can Borno State, which is under siege, register more PVC collections than Lagos State? The INEC might have allowed its distribution of these cards to be tampered with. We hope that INEC will now use the extra time it has given itself to perfect its methodology. Well, there you have uh, Dr. Amadou Ali speaking up about what he thinks of the reshuggling of the elections and the preparations for the elections by INEC. 
Well, we're joined now via Skype from Abuja by Oluwole Osaze Uzi, who is the director in charge of voter education in INEC. He joins us via Skype. Thank you for joining us today. Well, having listened to what uh, Dr. Amanda Lee said, uh, in the summary of that is INEC was not just ready for this election. What do you think? Is that the case? No, certainly not. We all heard uh, Professor Atari Jika, chairman of INEC, speak on Saturday. I think it was shown live on most channels. Um, but to be fair to Chief Ali, I think he said INEC was totally prepared, was uh, the exact expression he used uh, looking at it again. And uh, yes, uh, the chairman conceded that we're not 100% prepared, but that we're in a position to carry on with the elections, save for the uh, very strong advice given by the security forces. So to say that uh, we, we, we had deadlines, we had uh, timelines we're going to meet, and from our own assessments, we were on course to meet those uh, timelines, and we're, we would have uh, conducted that election uh, come the 14th, if not for the strong advisory from the security forces. Is it true that there are some materials, voting materials, sensitive ones, that were not in the country at the time of that announcement of the rescheduling of the elections? Well, quite honestly, I cannot personally speak on, on all the arrival of all the materials, but the, the, I know for a fact that the, the basic materials required for the conduct of the elections were in the country. For example, the presidential ballot papers were actually in the country, so we would have gone ahead with the, the ballot boxes, contrary to Chief Ali's assertions, where are actually in the country. And sufficient materials re re uh, reasonably re uh, required for the conduct of the elections are in the country. Tell us then, because we understand that uh, about, they say between 16, a little over 16 containers were being cleared at the Papa Wharf today in Lagos of some materials for these elections which was rescheduled. Is that true? Well, I, I don't have that information, but don't forget that we have two elections, or we had two elections, the 14th and the 28th. And the first one we're dealing with are the Presidential and National Assembly elections. All the while, INEC keeps receiving material, so, but I cannot speak definitively on whether 16 containers. I, I don't have any figures or facts on that particular uh, session. Did I not think it was okay to go ahead with the elections at the initial date if they hadn't cited security reasons, even with the distribution of the permanent photocards where you had about 26 million people who had not yet collected their PVCs at the time? Is there a that distinction between distribution and collection? Cards had been distributed, but a large uh, percentage um, we're not totally satisfied that had not been collected by those who are entitled to collect them. They're still lying in our offices and in our distribution centers. We could have. If you go back, I don't, I don't know why we didn't look at this. If you go back to the Kitty and Ashram elections, we had about the same percentages. And these elections have been adjudged reasonably free and fair and credible by most impartial observers, non-partisan observers. The same people who are complaining about this uh, lack of collection did not raise a voice when it came to uh, and yes, we would prefer a situation where all those who are entitled to pick up their cards who are still in the country do pick up their cards. We would prefer that situation. And we hope that the extensions and uh, people will take advantage of the uh, enlargement of time within which they can pick up their cards. Can you put a figure to those who went to collect their permanent voter cards and could not collect it owing to one uh, operational challenge or the other? And then a figure to those who just did not show up at all, because people have argued about them, it, it looks as though the impression they have from INEC is, we've distributed these guys, but they will not go and collect it, irrespective of those who have this challenge of picking them up. Yes, um, as of now, we have almost 70% collection. So about 70% of people who have cars collected their cards. We, on a, on, a, on a percentage basis, that is uh, just under 30, uh, about 30%. But amongst those who have gone there and did not see their cards, those of transfers, those of the registration that was done much later on last year, I think we have less than 2% of that, less than a million people who, uh, whose cards have not gotten to, their, to, the polling, to the polling units, to the distribution centers of Ekpad. Okay, just hang on a minute. Let me get to my panel of analysts here to get a response to 